Daytona's over, and I, I didn't want to do this on Monday. Everybody was talking about Daytona on Monday, so I waited a little bit, little bit later. Congratulations to Dale Jr. That was a great win. Uh, boy, did NASCAR need that, and did he need it. Uh, so <clears throat> that was pretty good. My observation of Daytona will be quick because we're focusing on Phoenix, our next race this week. <clears throat> you know, Daytona was a deal where it's restrictor plate racing. You can't pay any attention really to much what happens at Daytona as far as the rest of the season, the rest of the tracks are concerned. This was a race where you needed to stay out of trouble very badly, as you know from seeing all the uh, the big ones kept happening. I, I don't. I think we're going to have to call the big, big, big ones uh, because the big one kept kept going on and on and on, even the last lap, you know. But Dale did a good job. I was a little dismayed because there was no more passing for the lead. You know, I'm big about passing for the lead. Sooner or later, we're going to figure out how to do that. And because uh, uh, once uh, Dale got in the lead, was anybody going to go around him? I can tell you that right now. Not with Jeff Gordon, uh, his teammate, helping him. Um, but he did a great job, and it was a, it was a tremendous win for NASCAR, for him, etc. So. Uh, it worked out extremely well. I'm glad nobody got hurt, and uh, it uh, it was it was an interesting time. I had a chance to talk to most of the drivers down there, and they all said the cars were fairly easy to drive, as in typical Daytona, until you got into the draft and it became kind of dark and nasty, as you saw what happened Sunday. And I really felt sorry for Joe Joey Chipwood, the president of Daytona, a great great promoter. He's one of the best we got in the business. He had to put up with that nasty rain, rain, and uh, as a guy that's promoted many, many races, I can tell you, there's nothing worse than rain without somebody you know well dying, I'm telling you, it just keeps getting nastier. Well, at any rate, that was Daytona. Now, Phoenix is coming up, and what about Phoenix, particularly for you new fans? Well, it's, it's a mile, a mile plus track. It's flat. It's one group. You don't see much racing there, unfortunately. But are we going to see evidence of the arrow push again? The arrow push, I remind everybody, is that nasty thing that happens when the guy gets in the lead and nobody can catch him. He just goes away. Have we beaten it? I doubt it. Are we going to find out at Phoenix? I doubt it. Again, it's a one-groove racetrack. It's hard to get around. Um, you know, I don't know who designed that track, but gee whiz, it's a really, really tough track and uh, to, to, to race on. And it doesn't produce great spectacle. I'm sorry, it just doesn't. Um, it, it's, a, uh, it's a flat mile. You know, it, uh, it was made for, another one of those tracks that was made for stock cars and Indy cars. I mean, that was crazy when they did that. Indy cars didn't work there. Stock cars do pretty good. <clears throat> it's in a majestic setting out there on the desert with the hills around. And generally, folks, it never rains there. Unless it's race time. For some reason, we've had a uh, if it rains, this is the desert. How does it rain in the desert? I don't know. I used to think it wouldn't rain in Las Vegas, but every once in a while it did. Now I'm not saying it's going to, and I certainly hope it doesn't, because usually 90% of the time it's, it's good. Are we going to learn anything? Maybe. Um, who's going to be favored there? Look out for guys like uh, Denny Hamlin, uh, uh, Jimmy Johnson, of course. Uh, uh, Carl Edwards, he's, he'll be tough there. Carl Edwards, wonderful driver. Uh, guys like that, uh, uh, Matt Kenseth, uh, the usual guys that do well on the on the bank and flat racetracks. What else are there? Well, these are the guys that just keep going and going and going. And uh, so, you know, that's okay. Well, I'm at it. You know, it's out west. And, and, and it's time to, to, to put on your Western look and so forth. And uh, Austin, Dylan, why don't you leave the cowboy hat at home? You're great at everything else. You don't need the cowboy hat, okay? Coonskin hat, Confederate soldier's hat, Yankee hat, anything. No, throw away the cowboy hat. That's Richard Petty. Please, Austin, get rid of it. <laughs> Phoenix will be on at 3.30. Um, 
uh, Eastern Time. And uh, it's probably going to be worth watching. Uh, it's going to be a lot of, like I said, there's going to be a lot of passing in it. It's going to be a lot of pileups in it. No, there usually isn't. Uh, some decent races beforehand that uh, might be uh, some of the uh, other races might be fairly good. But Phoenix will start a two-week deal where we'll find out about the dreaded arrow push with Las Vegas being the ultimate test. Now we'll really find out about the arrow push at Las Vegas because that's more, much more indicative of whether we can pass for the lead or not. Now, folks, you're probably watching this nice cup I'm drinking. This is not a Dean Martin cup. This is plain old tea, uh, Carolina sweet tea. And you see the girl on the front of that. That's my daughter, Patty, when she was maybe one and a half. She grew up to be quite a lady. As a matter of fact, she decided she wanted to be in TV production. And guess what? She has produced more live television on sports that any woman in the history of TV. So I'm proud of Patty. Did good, kid. Despite your horrible grades in high school. Did you even go to high school? She did all right in college. 